Hello everybody, in today's video, I'm gonna show you this Joseph A. Bank suit that I picked up for $7. I'm gonna tailor in the coat, I'm gonna lengthen the sleeves, I also may mess with the pants. And then I'm also gonna show you what I think is the fastest, best way to be able to check if a suit fits you in general, especially if you're alone thrifting at a thrift store. Okay, so let's go. Hello everybody, it's Robert Powers. Four and a half out of My five. My shoe collection. These are made of shell cord. Yeah, here they are finished up. I'm not a professional. Look how tight this is though. Very clearly here, I just cut the thread in half. And here they are, all finished up. Okay guys, so as I said in the intro ditty there, um, obviously this is a Joseph A. Bank suit that I just picked up. This is not one of their high-end suits. It is the, I believe it's the Traveler line, right? Um, so it's uh, 40 regular, and generally speaking, I, that is my size is a 40 regular. And in case you don't know, the first number on a suit is, uh, uh, you can see it there, right? It says 40R, 40 is the size around the chest. Now typically that's gonna be, I think about two inches bigger than what your actual chest is, but you'll start to figure out, generally speaking, what size jacket fits you. If this was a uh, 40L for long, they would make the sleeves and the bottom of the jacket longer. 40 short, the sleeves would be a little shorter and the body would be a little shorter. So therefore, if you're a thinner person, you may need like, let's say, uh, you know, a 40 long or 38 long. Does that make sense? Uh, if you're a heavier set person, then obviously you go up in chest size and you may go down in the length so you don't have, you know, big ape arms, you know, too long of a jacket, right? So I'm going to put this on. I'll show you how it fits right now and what I'm going to adjust it on it. So here's the jacket and slacks. Um, first, I'll show you the slacks a little bit. Um, I don't know if you can tell, but there's the clasp right there. That's snug against me. So I have to suck in a little bit. Um, it's wearable, but like this, I, I don't know. It's not something that's ideal. You know, you have to suck in like that. So let me button the jacket. Now, first of all, let me show you my fast way to determine how a suit should fit. Now, the reason I'm giving you this info is even though how a suit should fit, there's probably... Uh, I don't know, at least 50 videos that I've seen on the internet from people that know much more about suits on how a suit should fit. The reason I'm bringing this to you, I think a lot of it is cloudy and muddy, um, and it's not very direct and easy to use, especially if you're alone. Like at a thrift store, some of them don't really have mirrors, or the mirror is halfway across, and you're not going to grab a suit, walk across, and back and forth and back and forth. So here's my fast method. The first thing I want to check is the shoulders, right? Because just generally speaking, you're not going to adjust the shoulders. So what you want is this part of the, the shoulder padding. You don't want it really over your shoulders. This one is borderline. If it was any bigger, I wouldn't uh, uh, buy it. But you take your hand, put it on your side of your, your arm, your shoulder here, just run it up. You see here, I can almost grab a little bit, but like I said, this is on the borderline, but it's okay. In other words, if it were too big, it would hang over. I'll show you one that's too big next. I feel like this doesn't translate to video as well as it is in real life. It doesn't look as bad as it, as it is on video. I run my hand up on this Burberry suit though and you see it catches on the shoulder pad. Now notice the collar gapping and there's space around the top of my chest and the coat. Here's a second example. You see when I raise my arms, you see that collar gapping. You see it just looks a little bit too big. There's a lot of space under my armpits. Obviously way too big here in the chest. Um, it, this was a 40 regular as well, but it's just, you know, I think it's because of the styling, the age of the suit. And when I run my hand up, I'm grabbing the shoulder pad. I'll do it on the other side. When I run my hand up, hand up grab the shoulder pad, and you can again see the gapping around my shoulders, uh, you know, around the collarbones there. So again, too big, pass. But this fits because I can't grab the shoulder pad. Next thing I'm gonna look for is, is their collar gapping. Now we're not talking bespoke Kirby Allison here, but no major gapping there. See, so through the shoulders, it pretty much fits me. Does that make sense? The next thing I'm gonna check is the length of the jacket. Now here's, I think, the, another fast, easy way to check the length. The end of the jacket should fall between these two knuckles on your thumb, between this one and this one. Now make sure your arms are relaxed. What I would do sometimes if the jacket was long is stick my arms down and you know try to stand up straight. Just, Stand relaxed, drop your arms. Now this one falls kind of right before the end of that knuckle, if you can tell, so the length is good, okay? I think that's ideal length for the jacket, right? That can be adjusted a little bit, but uh, you don't wanna probably mess with that, okay? If the shoulders don't fit and or the length is way too long or way too short, skip it, don't buy it. Next, the chest. So for example, on this one, do you see how from my armpits, 
there's a very little shape. It kind of drops. When I turn to the side, I'm just going to grab it here and I'm going to see how much material I can pinch with my fingertips against my chest. This is just too much room. You just want a little bit, just a little bit. Let me show you an example of a perfect fitting jacket. Here's an ideal fitting one. You see here, run my hand up. It fits nicely around the shoulders. It fits nicely around the neck. It's got some taper and it's got just enough room. Perfect. So in this case here, I'm going to take the sides in a little bit and I'm going to do the side seam. I have done it a couple times before, so I think I can pull it off. Now, the next thing I'm going to check is the jacket sleeve length. If you back up the video, you're going to see I'm actually wearing a different dress shirt. This is similar, but it is different. The reason I changed it is because before you really determine what length the sleeves on the jacket should be, you really want to have an ideal length dress shirt on. Now, I believe the ideal length of a dress shirt, if you look at your hand here, right here at the base of the thumb, the dress shirt should come to like, you know, right in the crook right there. So the end of the wrist where your thumb begins. And then I like about a finger length, a finger width, I should say, you know, which would be, I think, about a half inch of uh, cuff showing. So this sleeve actually isn't bad, right? This one might need to be lengthened just a little bit, but don't, by the way, don't do this. Pull the sleeve down or like this, pull the sleeve down. You see, you, you kind of have to let this jacket fall where it naturally is gonna be. This sleeve is the right length on the shirt. On both sides, I'm relaxed. And you can see this one, and this happens on about three out of four, at least half of the jackets I get. Uh, the right sleeve needs to be lengthened more than the left. So obviously this needs to come out. Uh, I'm gonna show you how to check to see if you have enough room to do that. But this isn't bad, like I said, a little big in the chest. At least this one sleeve needs to be lengthened. Um, and then as I showed you, the pants, I'm gonna let that out of the back seam, and I think this thing will fit nice. So once again, just take a look at the way it fits versus like if it was brought in a little bit. You see how it would give me a nicer silhouette. Um, I'll pin it up and I'll show you what it's, uh, the silhouette's gonna look like with it pinned. Now let me show you guys something here. Um, do you see I'm getting a, a little bit of an X, just a little bit, right? Let me show you how much I took in. That pinch is actually, that pinch is a half inch, but it's a half inch on that side, a half inch on this side. So that's one inch. And then this side as well. So that's really two inches. That's too much. You see, you can see my shirt. That's actually just a little bit too much. So I'm going to uh, let some of that back out. I think that fits pretty clean. You see that that, that white gap is gone. It, it's nice. I've got now, look at how much room I have. All I have now is just that. My fingers are touching my stomach and it's really not much. I mean, it's really just a little God, was it about a half inch? So a fabric, quarter inch, quarter, a long flap sticking out on each side, which is gonna take in a, you know, probably about an inch of fabric, which is actually quite a bit. So that little adjustment's gonna make a huge difference. You can still see the sleeve, but okay. Sorry about the kids in the, with the piano in the background, but I think that's good. And you see where I started? The, the first pin I think is there. So don't start, I didn't, I don't wanna start too high. As far as whether the sleeves can be taken out, first thing I'm gonna look for is the condition of the sleeves. If they're worn, when you open it up, you're gonna see that wear spot. So um, just checking to make sure, especially in that corner there, that the, the material is not especially worn and it's not, the suit is in like new condition. Uh, next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna feel, um, I'm, I'm taking my fingers like this and I'm feeling back up because here's the start of the lining. I'm going up past the lining and I'm feeling right, I know you can't see it on camera, but I can feel it right at the end of my fingernail. Uh, so it goes up to about there, which means, you know, if I've got about that much fabric, I can, you know, let out. I've got a good inch, maybe inch and a quarter that I could let out and still have enough fabric to fold under and, uh, you know, grab that lining, okay? Uh, so I think that's gonna work fine. These are not functional cuffs, um, which makes my job easier. If they were, you really can't do this. That's a whole other ball game. Uh, so, um, all right, uh, I don't, and I've only done that once before length and sleeve, so this'll, this'll be kind of fun. So first I am opening up the seam here between the lining and the bottom of the jacket on the back. Purpose of that is so that you can turn the jacket inside out because you have to have it inside out to work on it. So I was actually taking a look at the seams that I'm going to be sewing. I actually turned it right back outside, right high side out removing the pins and marking where the pins were with the chalk line. That chalk line is gonna be how much material I take out. 
um, and then measuring to double check those measurements will be transferred to the inside so let me show you what i have laid out here so i'm starting up here at the armpit i'm kind of pulled the pins out marked you know where the pins were basically so i'm starting right up here at the armpit if you can see and if i basically see where this is about all in it's at about six inches so i go from zero tapering into at six inches i've got about uh seven eighths of an inch material removed from the seam now i also went from the bottom up six inches and then another six inches just to give me some reference points and it's uh close to the same about seven eighths of an inch of material here i guess yes yeah, seven eighths you know uh, and i'll see if i go dead straight or taper it out a little bit so tapering it out a little bit is going to give you a little bit of more waste, a little bit, I think what they call skirt, you know, where it comes out a little bit. And kind of the same thing on both sides. Okay, trying to be conservative. I don't want to take out too much material. Okay, so where I'm at now, I got the seam ripped open. Apparently I may not have recorded that, but um, so those are those, mar I put marks six inches from the bottom. That one is 12 inches from the bottom. That one's six inches from the top. And I measured how far in, and I'm transferring those measurements to the inside. So now I need to go from the seam, seven eighths out, from the seam here, same thing, seven eighths of an inch out, and here from the seam, about seven eighths, and that was uh, that mark was six inches from the top. So that seam, you can see where it starts, right there. That mark, you can see it there. So it's all in by six inches. Okay, so something like something like that. That's where I need to sew, okay? And so you can see here, the seam has been taken apart. And now I'm pinning it back up uh, where the new location is gonna be. You can see that extra fabric, uh, you know, kind of hanging over. There's a little spot there that I didn't completely separate. Uh, it's not as easy as it looks when you get down towards the vent area. The vent gets kind of confusing, but. So spooling the uh, sewing machine back up with some black thread because it had white in it. You wanna match the fabric. And here we go to sew. Well, I made a mistake here. The mistake I made, these pins should be going the opposite direction. Yes, it matters. See, I can't get the pin out because it's going, it needs to be pulled out towards the machine. You see? So. See, now this one's facing the machine, so I can just pull it out. Now, right now, what I'm doing is I'm stopping because I'm not somewhere this angle has to come out and I'm just back tacking to stop. So now I can stop, take a look, and I can restart. This is not as easy as it looks. That corner there was a little bit too much, but it's basically, I think I basically got it. to keep going. Ow! Fudging a stick. <laughs> you guys can see this. The fabric got folded. The fabric got folded, so I have to pull that stitch out. Anybody can sew a straight line on flat fabric with no tension, but doggone it, man. There's actually tension on it, and the fabric is pulling. I think it's difficult. 
All right, it wasn't pretty. I got it apart, that fold out. Um, I did rip the fabric in two places. One there and one there, but I'm hoping it'll be not on the part that shows. I'm keeping my fingers crossed. This is frustrating. Okay, I think I got that end stitched. That was difficult. See, the fabric is like folded under, you know, and it's a kick out, so I don't know if you can tell. Um, stitch line goes down and kicks out. I know it's black on black here, but let's turn this inside out and see what I got. All right, that came out pretty clean. There's the armpit, you can see here. Obviously, you see the bump right there? That's because it needs to be ironed. Not bad, okay, now I gotta figure this part out here. I'm gonna see if I can wrap my mind around what I'm gonna do down here at the bottom. Um, is there just gonna be more overlap uh, between the coat tail and the outside or do I actually have to re-sew something here? So let me get my mind wrapped around that and I'll come back. Okay, so we have the, the vent here, right? So that's where the old vent was. I think all I really need to do is iron, you see this here? Instead of, let me get the camera closer. So that's the crease from the old vent. So it's gonna be more like this. Um, and then I probably need to, you see there? So from, again, from that crease, the old crease, which is here. See the new line? Let's continue it straight down. But what it does now is it makes too much. The lining is too far back. Um, so I have to, I think I probably have to, I don't know. Maybe I can double it up. I need to figure out what I'm going to do with the extra lining material. I think I have it figured out. So once again, here's the old vent. It's going to be ironed like this, which is going to create too much material on the inside. Um, and you can see here, I already did remove some of the lining. So I'm going to keep removing it all the way and just sew it back up further. Um, so I'm thinking, is that math right? Is it doubled or is it if that's seven eighths of an inch, do I just need to go in seven eighths? I think I'm going to double check that, but I think this just needs to go in about seven eighths. I've got it inside out and this is that line that needs to go to there needs to go to there so I think first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it downstairs and iron that in I just may have found a deal breaker I don't know if this hole was there or if I screwed it up this is the tail of the coat this is the middle of the back I don't think that was there when I got it I think I just ruined this jacket damn all right guys here's a real deal I'm frustrated and I'm pissed I know what that hole was I probably picked a hole in the fabric when I was undoing the stitch on the bottom I've actually enlarged it. I cleaned it out. Here's how much, first things first. Uh, my business mentor taught me this, be, do, have. Uh, the world kind of, the, the consumerism world will, will kind of want to teach you that if you have this, have the nice car, have the nice clothes, then you will be like wealthy people. You know what I mean? Uh, be, do, have. Okay, I messed up that explanation. Be, do, have. The consumer world tries to teach you that if you have the nice clothes, that you will do what rich people do and you will be rich. Well, that's not true. If you uh, um, uh, if you become the right kind of person that provides value to other people, okay, you will do the right things and then have as a result the wealth. Well, how does this apply to clothes? Well, what this means is what I want is it's not just the end result of a nice tailored suit. If I want a nice tailored suit for cheap and I do this and I mess up, you know, like create heartache and extra work, then I start to feel like, well, it's not worth the amount of work I now have to, extra work I have to put in just to have the nice clothes. Well, I don't want to have the clothes. I want to be a tailor. Does that make sense? So I'm willing to go through this kind of stuff because I want to be somebody who is able to tailor their own clothes. If I become the person who can tailor things uh, uh, you know, well, then I will do what good tailors do, and then I will have the stuff. So I'm not so much after a cheap suit as mastering the skill. I hope that made sense. This is either scrap or I can fix it. So I have everything to gain, nothing to lose. So I'm gonna, I cut out a little square piece of fabric and I'm trying to adhere it to the back. Let's just see what I can pull off here, okay? So I've got the hole, I'm on the inside of the, uh, of the piece. I have this little piece of scrap fabric I cut from some of the excess. And this is fabric tape. This is like you basically iron it and it melts. Um, I'm gonna take a piece of this. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it in half. I'm gonna cut, uh, I'm basically trying to cut a hole in it about the size of that hole. 
like a window. It's not bad. Let me take a piece of fabric. I can figure out, I think. By the way, it does have direction. I don't know if you can see. Right? I think the direction is kind of going that way. Trying not to get glue on the iron, but that's how it's melting. Hey, you know what? Holy crap. That's not bad. I mean, this is in really light, bright light. Camera's about eight inches. I think I might be able to clean up some of those frays sticking up. Wow, that's not bad. Huh, I think I'm gonna keep going forward. This isn't gonna be one of my best jackets, but man, for a you know beat it up daily wear jacket. Whew. I've got it set up here. You see the, uh, you know, it's moved in. Uh, the old stitch line is where that white line I kind of traced over it. That's the new stitch line. Um, I, can, I can see it, I don't know if you can, but you know, I can see the holes there. And here we go. I think that actually worked. Here's the, the sleeve. Huh. All right, gotta close up a little bit up in here. Um, there's a little bit more to, to close up, but it's working. almost there that's the seam that I just did and you can see here it's I think it's gonna lay nice I need to close up the bottom and there's just a little bit left here that I need to you know pull together all right let me show you guys where I screwed up okay and not again so here's the tail of the coat right vent vent collar and if you turn this up because this fold here was here, came in seven eighths and seven eighths. That is what, two, uh, one and three quarters inches. I now have one and three quarters inches too much lining material, you see? Duh. So what I should have done was when this came in, um, I should have not sewn the same line. I should have show, sewn in, I guess that would be, so, I think it'd be seven eighths further in on each side. So. I could take it back apart, but I think I'm gonna cheat on this. Um, Cause it's a lining, you know what I mean? I mean, if this was like a Brooks Brothers jacket or something like that, I'd do a better job, but, and I think I'm gonna just like put in a pleat in the back here like that to hide it. Uh, I'm not sure yet, I, I, I'll, I'll figure it out. Okay, so here's where we're at. My fingers tip is touching, so that's all the material I have. See, now I've got some tape or some shape. I'm going to show you that it's, it's not, it's not perfect, guys. I mean, definitely not. Um, I don't know how much you can see. I, I think here it doesn't lay very well. This could have been done better here, but, and I don't think you can see, I don't think you can see that hole. It, it, it could be better here. There's a little bit of pulling. You see that? So, and obviously you see a little bit here because I'm, you know, wearing 
I'm not wearing the matching slacks. But next, um, what I need to do is the sleeves. So this shirt, I think, does fit pretty well. This shirt might be a tad long, so I think I'm gonna go, if this shirt were ideal, I'd stop where that purple line is. But I think on this sleeve, I'm trying to angle the camera. This sleeve, I think I need to add one half inch. And on this one, if I get into that purple line, this one I need to add a full one and one eighth, or one and a quarter. No, one and a half. One and a half, and a half inch. Half inch on the left, one and a half on the right. Let's get to lengthening the sleeve. First, I have to take apart this, I'm not sure what you call it, but this pleat here where the, uh, the buttons are, uh, opening that up, and then removing the lining from the end of the sleeve. Just be careful here when you're lengthening, you need to add material so you don't want to poke a hole. And then now I'm measuring to see how much an inch and a half is going to be, uh, just to make sure that I do have the material to actually add in. Okay guys, so here's where I'm at. Um, I need to unfold this cuff, um, and there is a, enough room. There's uh, over two and a half inches, uh, but I'm going to have to put all the buttons back in. Um, you see how the cuff, they sew the buttons through, so eh, oh well. Well, first I think, I'm not sure what these buttons or these stitches are holding, but I need to undo them. Um, yeah. So let's get these out. I've never done this part before. I've never taken this whole part out this far. Okay, there we go. And no, maybe, eh, okay. Maybe that last button could have stayed, but it's coming off too. All right, maybe it's not. Maybe we're leaving it. I just need to be able to open this. Wow, that was more of a pain than I thought. There's more stitching stitched through from the inside to the outside or something. See, I can't get it open, so I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah. I'm sure this is one of the differences between a well-made jacket and a poorly made jacket. A cheaper jacket is cutting corners like this. Ah, there we go. You guys want to say hi to Romeo? Hey, Romeo. Hey, puppers. Okay, uh, great. Now that's a part. Uh, you see my battle here? I'm learning. So here what I'm doing is preparing the sleeve. The ends of the sleeve either came apart or weren't really sewed together. Now I'm taking it to the iron to iron out the old pleat and uh, straighten out the fabric so that I can, you know, have it lay flat and you also don't want to see that crease on your sleeve. Now, this part here is uh, basically getting the machine ready. And this is sewing up, like I said, the, this is the gap uh, that runs up and down the sleeve because it wasn't sewn all the way together or came apart when I was taking it apart. In other words, the, the front and the back of the sleeve kind of came apart, if that makes sense. I'm not putting it back together yet. So back downstairs, now I'm sewing in the new crease where I want it. You know, in other words, the end of the sleeve, I'm ironing it over and I'm using a little bit of that fabric tape, the ironing fabric tape, uh, to keep that end of the sleeve folded over. So more heat, more ironing. It would have been better actually, I think, to have something round to iron on here it is something I figured out later, but it worked. Okay, so this sleeve, the, I didn't attach the lining yet, but I'm checking the length. And we're good, half inch over here. All right, there's one sleeve done, four buttons, lining stitched. I already checked the sleeve length and it's still stick your arm through and the lining's not twisted. So one more to go, half inch on the other side. All right, guys, I was almost going to just cut this video out, but I just want to show you some of you guys, I think I'm smart and brilliant and uh, I, I, sometimes I think I'm the stupidest person on the planet. I just showed that. 
Did I just sew that? Anyway, I sewed the wrong sleeve. Ugh. Okay, now I got the correct side stitched. Ugh, that wasn't bad. Right? I think it's pretty good. There's a little bit of tension right here. I'm going to iron that out. Um, I think I'll figure it out. I think I'll be able to iron that out, but you see there's a little bit of tension in that. If I iron it flat, I think it'll be okay. And I got to get that glue off of there from the tape. Next, I'm going to let out the back seam here. And that happens right here. And uh, there's a decent amount of material here, actually, if you can see. Uh, I can easily add probably three inches, two. I can easily add two inches. I need about two, two and a half inches, so. So the back seam isn't too difficult once you've done it once or twice. Uh, the most difficult part is getting it apart without poking a hole in the fabric, because again, when you're letting something out, you need to preserve the fabric. So that's just being very careful with the seam ripper. And I go down, I always go down eight inches, uh, make the new line, and I know this is kind of going quickly, uh, but I mark the new line, tapering it in from zero to, in this case, two inches, and you want it all in before you get to the belt line, uh, then sew it back up. You can see, there's the old one. You can still see the threads there. There's the new seam. I put in one inch on each side, should be two inches bigger. Now I gotta go iron all that out. And here it is all finished up, and I think it's pretty good. So you see here, I still have that striped shirt on that had the purple line on the sleeves. And I think the chest fits pretty well. Again, this is a traditional fit, so it's not supposed to be super, um, you know, like a super tight fitting. Uh, it's pretty clean through the back. It's not bad. It's got some taper. Those, uh, the, the, the vents there sit fairly well. The length is good. And I'm trying to show you the back of the pants there. The pants came out, you know, well. They came out nice. And again, traditional fit, so they're not supposed to be that tight in the legs. Uh, fits pretty clean through the soldiers the shoulders now again this is a you know off the rack joseph bank so it's got you know the the you know bigger arm holes and stuff like that that you know it's not a tailoring thing that's a cheap suit thing but i think this is a good suit that like i said i can add into my rotation wear it and you know be proud